Many brand their venues as pillars of the community, but some of Australia's biggest pokey clubs are also spending millions on themselves. In a special investigation, SBS has obtained figures from clubs in one of the country's most disadvantaged and ethnically diverse areas where gambling addiction is rampant. 20-year-old demolition worker Hassan Jaybar has wanted to get this off his chest for a year. A crippling pokey addiction spanning 12 tumultuous months. I make about 50000 a year, so I pretty much put every single dollar in the machine. Just chasing that dream of, you know, someday winning, but it just never happened. Hassan's from Bankstown in southwest Sydney, where registered clubs are cashing in big on the pokies. Of the top 10 most profitable New South Wales clubs based on pokey profit, all but one are in Sydney's west or southwest. You just pretty much want to feel rich, you know what I mean? But in reality, you go to work the next day with an empty pocket. Those yet to break the habit are more reluctant to talk publicly. I'm still a bit. I try to fight to go out. Sometimes I'm strong, sometimes I'm weak. The clubs that for some lead to crippling addictions also sell themselves as important contributors to their communities. Now, for the first time, SBS has obtained exclusive figures showing where the money is also being spent, including the outlay on senior management. In pre-tax pokey profits or player losses, Bankstown Sports Club made more than $84 million in its 2016-17 reporting period, while spending up to $1.67 million on remuneration for five top staff. The pokey windfall for Cabra Val Diggers in Fairfield was $75 million. Its packages for five executives worth up to $1.38 million. Neighbouring Dooleys earned $82 million, with up to $2.37 million spent on nine club bosses. And Fairfield RSL generated $40.5 million in the pokies, with 14 senior staff costing up to $2.6 million. Fairfield counts as one of the most disadvantaged areas in New South Wales. According to recent ABS data, the unemployment rate is almost double the national average. More than half the population was born overseas and 7 out of 10 people speak a language other than English at home. Community leaders say migrants and new arrivals are some of the most vulnerable people to gambling addiction. When they came to Australia, they can't speak the language. They can't find the work. They feel bored, staying home, doing nothing. The gambling problem in, in within the Vietnamese community, I think it's quite big. I think is uh, it, it had a severe impact on the family. The state's biggest pokey earner is Mounties, which counts maintenance of this Fairfield Council Oval as part of the millions Mounties, like other clubs, spend on the local community. In some ways, they are part of community, but in a lot of ways, they own this community. In 2014, the total remuneration for Fairfield RSL's top executive was almost $800,000, about the same amount it spent on its total donations back to the community. Over a three-year period, the club spent more than $100,000 each year on overseas travel, with what it calls educational tours to Bali, Singapore, Macau and Las Vegas. Over the 2015-16 financial period, Dooley spent $4.7 million on consultants for redevelopment projects. And over three years, the club sent staff on overseas trips totaling $300,000, including training at the Disney Institute in Florida. In response, all clubs highlighted their efforts to curb problem gambling and defended their spending. Fairfield RSL likened managing a club to running a corporation. Its CEO saying, with this expectation and responsibility, I don't think it is inappropriate that they are paid accordingly. I also think it is important that benefits to the community are simply not measured by donation. Dooley's arguing salaries are commensurate with market rates, adding governance processes and expenditure relating to staff travel is in line with standards that you would see in most Australian companies. While the head of Mounties said the club is proud of its commitment to the community and approaches its governance responsibilities in a professional and respectful manner. Tang No was a Fairfield councillor during the heroin epidemic that almost swallowed Cabramatta during the 1990s. 
but laments what he describes as a glaring failure. That's probably my biggest regret, that we won the war on drugs, but we couldn't wean away the dependence on pokies in our area. It's a war former addicts are determined will be won. You know, if you want to win, just work for it. If you want to lose, that's the place to go. Omar Dabaj, SBS World News.